Hey guys, what's happening? So, I had an interesting pickup here. Um, all these actually lathe accessories. So, they actually came from the guy that I originally had bought the lathe from. Um, you know, his dad had actually owned the lathe and he had died, you know, like a few years ago. Um, so he was cleaning out this garage. But, he didn't actually see, these were like hidden away in some cabinets. So they actually originally had gone with, gone with my lathe, or came with my lathe. And uh, so last night I went and picked them up. Um, some pretty cool accessories, even some other stuff that I'm not, I mean, I kind of had seen it. In, like the, the dad had actually had some diagrams and stuff of this thing, but I'll show it to you. But it's, it's really cool. A couple other things, I'm not even sure what they are. Um, but let me show you uh, the lathe. I, I made some videos about me restoring the lathe. Um, sorry, I'm going to go out of the mess, but if you're new to my channel, I, I restore machine tools and build them and kind of mess around with them, just for my own personal hobby stuff. Um, and actually, what's funny is it all started in 3D printing. So if you watch my channel for 3D printing, the 3D printer, 3D printing, since I started on 3D printing like 8 to 10 years ago, you know, creating the models inspired me to get into the machining part because I wanted to make my models out of metal. So I, I could make them out of plastic with the 3D printers, but I wanted to start making stuff out of metal. You know, because I, few, I used Fusion 360 and it was cool. I could do it all in one program. Um, so here's the lathe right here. It's a, I think it's a 50, 1950s 12 inch Crass, Crass Man Atlas. I went through piece by piece every single bolt and, uh, you know, cleaned up everything, painted everything. I kind of went through in the video of the different sections I was rebuilding. But yeah, everything works perfect on it, you know, did all kinds of stuff on it. But I'm actually excited to actually have all the accessories because, um, I mean, the, the guy I came with a lot of stuff, and what's weird is a lot of the, the things that came with it, I, I, it because he had, it was an extra chuck key, right, that came with that, that four-jaw chuck. Oh, so here's some of the original documentation. I just ripped it, but get that out of here. Um, maybe it's not here, it's over here, maybe. Kind of keep scrapped. Oh, okay, here it is. I'm going to grab that and I'll show it. This makes sense. I actually had the, this part, which is the um, the milling attachment. I'll show you that. So I knew he had it. I knew he had a lot of the stuff because I could see, like, there was accessories. Like, there was re replacement parts for things, you know? Like, this, that's the milling attachment for it. And here's the vice that goes on it. So I knew he had this somewhere in this, his garage. I was, I was thinking, you know? So originally I had sent him a picture and said, hey, if you ever see this thing, you know, let me know. And then this thing too, the, the dad who had we started making this thing. But I'll go into that in a couple seconds. But let me show you all the stuff that came with it. So that's a steady rest. And I knew he had a steady rest because he had replacement of these things, the parts in, in, in the drawer that came with it. So I was like, why would he have that if he didn't have a steady rest? Um, I don't really know for sure. I mean, this fits in the lathe, but I don't know if this was for a wood attachment or for the dog leg attachment. I'm thinking it was the dog leg chuck, but or also wood because this is a wood lathe attachment. I mean, you don't want to be doing, you don't really want to be cutting wood on a, on a metal lathe. It's the worst thing because the oil will just, the sawdust will just get sucked up into the oil, clog everything up. So if I was going to do some wood, I'd have to put some serious plastic down or something. But yeah, it's a definite no no to do wood on a metal lathe. Um, yeah, I found the book, the original Craftsman Machines Tables, the original book with it. Like I said, this thing is probably from the 50s, like the serial number kind of... That's from the 50s, so... Yeah, there's a picture of the steady rest right there. So that is a uh, four-jaw truck. I'm actually going to restore like the other one. I made another video of me restoring the truck. So I'm now I'm making another video of me restoring this thing. Um, it's a four-jaw chuck. What's weird is it's an eight-inch chuck, but it's, you know, this is kind of a, I feel like it's too big for that lathe, but because I think it's like one and a half thread diameter, the, the what's it called, the uh, spindle, spindle thread. It's, I mean, it's a hollow, hollow. Uh, it's not fully uh, solid steel. Like my, I have a buck chuck that's crazy heavy. Um, or no, not buck, but bison chuck. So he also gave me this, uh, this cool old, like, uh, four inch, um, like a, I don't know what brand it is, it's a, I mean, it's a, what's it called, like a vice. But what's interesting about this one is it looks like a, I can 
you can angle the vise and lock it in place. See this, like you can bring it up. So it's like a multi-angle vise. Um, maybe if I clean it up, I'll be able to figure out who makes it. Like all this stuff is pretty old stuff, so I'm thinking this would probably be American made, maybe? Not sure. Yeah, because most of the stuff I got from him was all American made stuff. Um, then it looks like he made this homemade chuck here, too, as well. So that's cool. Well, that way I can maybe uh, make another, do something else with that, maybe. I actually might re thread that. And I need a couple different things for my, my indexers. I do have a couple of late, late checks. So this is a fourth axis, CNC fourth axis. I bought a big lot, I'm gonna read about it. Rich Mill. So I got one of my, what's it called? One of my CNC router over there. It's a fourth axis, you know, indexer, fourth axis. Um, that's why I actually put a NEMA 23 motor on. I had to re remachine and design some internal parts to make it work with a modern motor. But, um, all right, so here's the star of the show. And this is actually what originally means. The guy had the documentation from the 80s of him actually ordering the... This is before the internet, right? So they didn't have internet. So they were collaborate, collaborating with, uh, like, back and forth via mail. And um, they were, like, sending diagrams back and forth. And I don't know if he... He even actually sent this to a machinist, I think, and had him build this thing. I don't know if you guys can see what this is. It's a Dayton motor, though. I mean, I already know what it is because I've seen the diagrams and what it was, what it's for. And it looked like he had actually originally maybe got this on the back of a catalog. Um, I mean, you know, it's look at look how old you know it's old if you have that kind of plug on it. Um, but um, um, this is a surface grinder. Let me bring this back over the way. So. It fits on here, on here like this, and it's a surface of grinding attachment. <laughs> How cool is that? So, let's say if I got, I got to regrind one of my like uh, Entox tail socks, um, you know, it gets out. Of, you can you can regrind stuff, grind points, you know, whatever. So it's a surface grinder for the lathe. But it's cool that actually I get to see it now in person because I, I'd seen the diagrams and. I could see his, all this information about him making this, you know? But, alright, and the last thing. So you guys know what all this stuff is. I mean, I, I already know what most of it is, but uh, this thing is what I'm wondering about. I think I kind of know what it is. It's tapered. Right? So I'm guessing this is, is this like a 5C call it indexer. I literally think that's what it is. Um, because I was looking at it, I'm like, what the hell is this thing? Yeah, okay, yeah. This is probably a 5C, call it indexer. So you can basically put a 5C call in there, grab a piece of round or square stock, depending on what kind of call you have, and index it around. Like this part comes out right here, but once it's locked in place, you know, then you can spin this around. You can make a cut, index it, make a cut, index it. I guess you have to get some mounting clamps. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to figure out how to use this because I, I, I mean, if I was gonna index something, I'd probably use my mill and my my actual CNC indexer, but I wanted to manually do it. Yeah, I didn't know what that was. When I was looking at it yesterday. I was trying to figure it out. Well, it was last night when I brought it home, and I was like, okay, I didn't notice that it looks. That, I mean, this I don't know for sure, but. That looks like a 5C call it to me. So. Alright. That was a score. The guy actually gave it to me for free because I already bought the lathe. I had to go spend the use of gas to go get it. But. That is cool. I can't wait to use this thing. Whoa, the service grinder. Yeah, actually, it did come with a belt. So, I, I'm actually looping up the belt. Putting some silicone on it to. I mean, the belt's from the 80s. Um. All right, guys. Cool. Let me know what you guys think. Yeah, I'm actually glad because those steady rests are expensive. I was looking online on eBay, and those steady rests are probably 300 bucks. 
These, are, these were the actual, the, the, the better ones that actually opened up, that cracked open. Um, yeah, I don't know about the wood attachment, but... Alright, cool, stoked, got the manual too. Alright guys, awesome.